Well, welcome back to Metropole Debrief with me and Dero Ganga. Joining me in studio, Kwame Owino, who's the CEO, Institute of Economic Affairs. And I had said earlier on, we'll be putting Brexit into the Kenyan context and asking how will the Kenyan economy be affected. But before we do that, we'd just like to put some... Um, perspective into this conversation. Now, according to an anchored report, Kenya would lose up to two billion in revenue should Britain leave the EU with no deal. Joining me in studio, as I had mentioned, Kwame Wino, to put this into context. Now, before we start this conversation, I'd like us to briefly talk about the trade relation between Britain and Kenya. In 2009, it hit an all-time high of 38.6 billion, uh, rather a 50.3 billion Kenya shillings, and an all-time drop of 38.6 billion. How do we explain this drastic fall? In 2009, we are up at 50.3 billion. Then fast forward, moving on three, four years later, it continues dropping, and now we are 38.6 billion Kenya shillings. Well, um, I think it's um, two things could explain that. <coughs> One of those Sorry. is basically the the exchange rate. Mm -hmm. I mean, if the Kenya shilling becomes more expensive, then obviously. Uh, our imports increase, but exports to, to, to Kenya decrease because people in the, in the UK would find it more expensive either to come here or actually to buy things from Kenya. Mm -hmm. Remember that most of the things that Kenya exports to the UK are related to uh, foods, basically beverages, food and flowers. If they can find alternatives for those, because our shilling, I mean, the, sh the Kenya shilling is more expensive than that does. So it tends to be the fluctuations in the currency on one side and the content. Um, one other one is just basically if there's one big um, <coughs> um, equipment, say for instance if Kenya buys very big equipment, um, mm -hmm. because most of what the, the UK sends to Kenya is motor vehicles, motor yeah, vehicle and parts accessories. and accessories and, and, and equipment. So if there's one big one, just like we know that for Kenya, whenever Kenya Airways buys or trades a big plane from the UK, from I mean from the US, from Boeing for instance, mm -hmm. it suddenly shows a big jump in, in the trade and then of course it, it normalizes. So in many, uh, for the 2009 and subsequent years, it's a mixture of those. There's a currency effect, there was definitely uh, a problem with the drought that we'd also had, mm -hmm. and then obviously um, uh, the fact that we had uh, um, um, imports of, uh, of, uh, of uh, capital equipment, which is mm -hmm. mostly motor vehicles and, 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 and spare parts. So that together mm -hmm. uh, then created one big jump and subsequently went down. Great. Now, I'd like us to begin talking about the anchored report. Yes. And it says countries are going to lose a lot should Britain leave uh, the European Union with no deal. And Kenya, for example, is said to lose 2 billion Kenya shillings, but the government has insisted there is no cause for alarm. What do you see? Well, there's no cause for alarm. I think the, the Ankton report was made, I looked at it, and it's actually made on the assumption that Kenya will have to renegotiate a deal. Mm -hmm. One of the things that happened very, very clearly, and the, the High Commission of the UK three times in this year alone has actually stated in a tweet and also stated in the public that, look, even if the UK were to leave without a deal, um, which would be completely unlikely, I think they might have something that just helps them to to move for a while, mm -hmm. <coughs> the, con the trading conditions that Kenya and the UK have today is what will stay in, in place. Mm -hmm. So basically, there will not be a major style uh, disruption because they'll keep the same trade uh, um, rules and regulations mm -hmm. and expectations as what we have today. So really, that doesn't, uh, that won't make a, a very big difference and two billion for a year is probably an exaggeration at this moment. Okay. Now, before Brexit, Kenya enjoyed and continues to enjoy free market access in relation to the EU bilateral trade agreements. What happens when Britain leaves the EU? Well, it depends. I mean, um, um, the UK leaving the EU, to be honest, is not necessarily a bad thing. Mm -hmm. Especially if they, 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 one of the things that the UK is concerned about is that trade policy in the UK uh, was hostage to decisions made by bureaucrats in Brussels. Now, it was an over-exaggeration that there's an imposition, but on the whole, the EU is actually less flexible mm -hmm. than people would be ideal. So the UK... Part of the argument that was made, apart from the political arguments, but part of the argument that was made is that if the EU is going to, and rather if the UK uh, is able to negotiate trade deals and more open trade deals, free trade deals with other, with other nations, it is possible that the offsetting effect would actually be much better. And so the UK would not necessarily suffer permanent damage. Mm -hmm. I am convinced that that is possible. Mm -hmm. Now, Kenya trading under the most favored nation tariff will be the a disadvantage because 5% extra tariff will be imposed on Kenyan goods, hence giving Kenyan competitors like South Africa and China an age of a Kenyan goods. And that's one possible scenario should Britain leave the EU with no deal. No, 
I mean, the UK has stated very, very clearly, and they've repeated. But there are no laws on Pepe Kwame. No, but you, I mean, there are laws. If we say, for instance, that what we have right now is basically what was negotiated under the EU, mm -hmm. and you say that those conditions will maintain, what will happen is that we'll simply say that based on those same conditions, we extend it for another two years as we try to negotiate. Mm -hmm. That is what exists. There will be okay. no, nobody will fall off the cliff. So before we go to the re renegotiation bit, the government says it's in talk with Britain. Yes for the renegotiation yes. and foreign affairs cabinet secretary ambassador monica juma during a press brief uh, briefing clearly stated that take a look could we get that back by monica Our eyes are on the ball. Your two cents. She's right. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, that's 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 what has been reiterated from from the, from her office, and at the same time has been stated by the UK. Mm -hmm. Now, the only complication would be this will stay for a while, and we'll try to negotiate um, a new trade uh, agreement between the ESC because it cannot be negotiated as Kenya. As Kenya, between the ESC countries and the UK. So mm -hmm. that's the, the only one. But in the meantime. Even if the UK was to, fall, to, to leave tomorrow, mm -hmm. Kenya's trade relationship with the UK, would nobody will fall off the cliff mm -hmm. because the same status that remains will, will stay for a while. Speaking of the EAC, there was a time uh, the East African community countries had a problem bringing Tanzania on board. Mm -hmm. So far? Uh, well, not just Tanzania. I think, yes, uh, you see, the East African community is very complicated for the reason that the classifications of its member states are different. Mm -hmm. So with the exception of Kenya, all the others are, le are less developed countries. So for that reason, they will have access to the UK and the EU without necessarily having to go through a new deal. And that leaves Kenya alone, uh, more or less. Mm -hmm. um, of course, Rwanda is more receptive. The other countries are, are not willing to go in with Kenya under the same conditions. Because even if they did nothing, the same conditions that would have, have applied to mm -hmm. countries at their income level would. So it requires more persuasion from Kenya to actually convince the rest of the East African partners that we should go into this altogether. So yes, that might be a complication, but it's our problem to solve. So throughout you've talked about renegotiation of the deals. So what are some of the key factors that uh, when the Minister of Foreign Affairs is renegotiating the deal, should uh, pay special attention to in relation to traders and uh, those people who flower farmers and horticultural producers? Well, I think uh, if, you, if you understand one of the things that happens is, so for, for instance, Kenya's biggest stake is actually in the flower market in Amsterdam. Yes. Uh, and if, you, if, if we all knew that Amsterdam is a market for the rest of the EU, so if, it was, if our trade, if, uh, if Kenya's, uh, uh, if flowers from Kenya were exported to the UK through the EU, there'd be a complication because if it, it, it will depend on what the trade uh, agreement is between the EU and the UK itself. So that can get complicated. Mm -hmm. However, how does that trickle down to the flower farmer back in Evasha? Okay, let me finish first. So the first thing, but the, the, one of the things that's been done is that Kenya has actually started, as she stated, uh, and Kenyan farmers are already starting direct flights and packaging of flowers from Nairobi all the way to London directly. Okay. So basically it means that they already have a plan B and mm -hmm. they've started to implement it. So if the tra same trade conditions remain, the only thing would be what would be the transport costs and it's possible that direct flowers to, to London would even be much cheaper for Kenyans. So there'd be some... Um, uh, uh, an advantage, a small advantage. Now, yeah. what about the Kenyan farmer? Well, I think the Kenyan farmers, uh, most of the flowers from Kenya are actually not small farmers. They tend to be big corporations yes. which have direct connections. So we're talking about uh, 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 horticultural pro uh, products. They would probably have to make the same um, different arrangements for transportation from Nairobi all the way to London and obviously uh, um, 
less into the to the rest of the EU market. Mm -hmm. Now this conversation is a very heated one online. We had asked, we put out a post and we asked people to share with us what they think. Now um, let's sample some of what these people say. Gabirum to necessary on Twitter says, just so we are clear, we pay money to the AU on a yearly basis and other regional trade blocks. What have they done for us? This is in relation to uh, Britain leaving the uh, trade block that is the EU. Yes. Uh, well, I, I don't think that it's related. I mean, if, if you're speaking about Kenya's, uh, Kenya's membership of the African Union, Kenya's membership of the African Union, of course, uh, has its own terms. Mm -hmm. uh, the African Union has agreed and is starting an uh, Africa-wide continental free trade area. Yes. They've got their necessary signature, so obviously that's an implementation question. But not everyone is on board, so it clearly means there are people who are dragging others behind. Well, even the most successful one, which is in the EU, basically did not have everybody coming on board at the same time. But if you have markets like Nigeria, which is one of the biggest markets in the continent, being lax about such an idea? Well, everybody else moves. They'll catch up. <laughs> uh, we cannot have... Uh, uh, and they, they probably have some legitimate concerns, but mm -hmm. basically if, as the EU decided, if once you have 23 signatures of the 44 countries that were in place, yeah. then obviously it needs to be implemented. So the others will negotiate uh, and come in on board when they feel comfortable, because we have to agree that uh, uh, the politics in the domestic, uh, at this, um, domestic politics is also important for whether a country commits to a long-term trade deal and to open markets, because obviously there'll be adjustments that are required within country, and maybe that's what some of their citizens are, scared, uh, are afraid of. But don't you think, okay, Nigeria, for example, biggest producer of palm oil in the continent, but Kenya gets its palm oil from Malaysia. Yes. Nigeria buys its flowers from another country. Yes. If they could come on board, they buy Kenyan flowers, we buy Nigerian palm oil. But that's, that should be direct. I mean, the point for me is that we cannot wait, uh, or rather the rest of Africa cannot wait mm -hmm. until every single African country is convinced. The, the logic both from the economic side, even the politics, and even the public sentiment about African economic cooperation is very real. And mm -hmm. I think it's something that Africans have sung for decades. Okay. So if an opportunity comes and there are significant uh, barriers, mm -hmm. uh, then those need to be resolved. However, I think it would be unfair to have Rwanda, Ethiopia, Kenya, um, um, South Africa, uh, Tanzania and all the others wait until Nigeria makes up its mind about how it needs to go. Mm -hmm. I think we should allow them the, that luxury to say that, look, we want to watch for a while or we need to make some domestic adjustments before we go ahead. Okay. Kevin Kabuya says, Atundiro Ganga, will the activation of Article 50 allow Kenya to renegotiate lesser expensive deals with the UK and will this affect existing deals with other EU member states? Well, Article 50 was already activated. Mm -hmm. And if you remember in March, I think March 27th, that's 29th, that's when the two years ran out. So the Article uh, 50 was what was required for the countdown to start towards the exit. And you remember they've missed that deadline. And so there's been another extension. So Article 50 uh, for, the e for the UK, that time has run out. Of course, there was negotiations for another buying. So they have another six months, I think, until sometime in September this year. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a difficult journey. But if you're talking about how Kenya will negotiate, yes, as you had, and Kenya is not trying to negotiate on its own. It will have to do that, or rather its first option, and the best option would actually to do that as part of East Africa. Mm -hmm. Because Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, Rwanda, Burundi, and South Sudan are already concluding the East Africa community. Mm -hmm. uh, they have a customs union, which means each country cannot generate, or, or rather cannot have bilateral trade arrangements in terms of a customs union. They need to negotiate together. And if they did that with the UK, that would be a much, much better way to go. Will this affect existing deals with other EU members? Um, I don't see how, uh, except that uh, what it means is that um, the EU, because Kenya is already trying to negotiate an economic partnership agreement with the EU, of course, under the, uh, the existing negotiations, that has also been difficult. And I think that's where you mentioned that Tanzania had a different view about how to go about it. So in our view, Kenya actually needs to take leadership, mm -hmm. uh, have more confidence in what our trade policy would be, and allow the other countries to catch up with us as well. Because even within the ESC, not all countries have accepted the same. So Kenya made a first step in terms of allowing imports into the country from the other countries um, at a lower rate of taxes than the others. Mm -hmm. So that's how these trade arrangements are. There's a lot of politics involved, the economics is sound, but at the same time you need to convince people to all come along. Well, finally, Abuya Patricia, how comes Britain always has the upper hand in relation to trade revenues at Ndiro Gangat Metropole TVKE at IEA Kwame? I don't know that that's true. One of the things that Kenyans need to understand, I think Kenyans have to understand this very, very clearly because it happens to 
Kenyans as well in the East African community. Mm -hmm. If two countries have a trade arrangement and one country is exporting more than the other, it doesn't mean the other that exports less uh, is losing. Mm -hmm. Because trade is a form of exchange. It's as if I and my grocer, I buy more goods from my grocer than actually they pay. So I pay money. But because for, for paying that money, I actually receive uh, some goods and services. Mm -hmm. uh, so what that means is that when you're exchanging, you are simply exchanging on the basis of what one country needs and what country can produce, one country can produce more than the other. Great. So the same argument that we have with Britain is, is if we say that Britain was actually having the upper hand, that's mm -hmm. the same argument that Ugandans and Tanzanians may have against us. But we all know you are actually just uh, exchanging goods and services based on everybody's comparative advantage. Great. Mm. You had an interesting tweet from your side. Do you mm. mind sharing it with us? Well, it was the same argument about how do we, what, 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 uh, how, how do we think that uh, Theresa May will negotiate this? That's a very <laughs> hot political <laughs> issue no, but, in but the UK no, parliament. To be, to be honest, yes. we are having conversations that yes. Theresa May came into the country and made some promises, but now she's under fire. Yes. Actually, people are saying we might see the end of May. Yes before April ends, yes. but she survived April, yes. but people are breathing fire on her neck, including her own party. Yeah. So if she might not live long into yeah. office, yeah. what position does that leave us, or it changes nothing? No, I think she's determined and she needs to get that chance. She's determined to at least live with a deal mm -hmm. that is acceptable to many places, because as she said, it would be reckless to actually leave office without a deal, and for the UK as well. Mm -hmm. So she knows she's working on a very difficult um, uh, time and a time, of course, is is um, a countdown. Yeah. She wants to actually act as a responsible leader by to making sure that when she leaves office, at least there's a deal and there's certainty for UK businesses at the same time UK's partners. And I think for that she needs to get some support mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. from Kwame Wino, not the British Parliament. They think <laughs> otherwise. Yes, yes. Now, as we wind up this conversation, Kenya is a big producer of fresh produce, and it's what it highly trains with Britain. Yes. But this uncertainty, mm. is it a wake-up call that we need to start considering new markets? Well, we need to start considering new markets anyway. Even if there was no Brexit, I think as you can see, the fluctuations reflect changes in currency. You cannot have one country alone take up all our all, all, all Kenya's exports into it. So to diversify our partners in terms of exports for Kenya's fresh produce, including other manufacturers, is something that was necessary whether or not uh, the, the UK leaves, uh, uh, whether Brexit happens or not. So that's definitely, yes. But this highlights why it's even more, es more essential for us as Kenyans to diversify the kind of things that we produce locally and which we export. 30 seconds. It's being argued that if Brexit is successful, we might see Frexit and other forms of exits. Your take? Uh, I don't think so. Mm -hmm. Because what this example shows you is that if you're going to make an, uh, um, a decision to exit, it's actually much, much more difficult to exit than to campaign for an exit as, we, as, as the referendum in the UK showed. Yes, the campaigns are always uh, mad with uh, party chants and slogans, Precisely. but when the rubber hits the road, that's when the reality sinks in. Certainly. Kwame Wino, thank you for making time. Thank you, Jim. There you have it. Kwame Wino, CEO, IEA, Institute of Economic Affairs, telling us that there's no cause for alarm. But that's why we have this conversation that, and it's open, the hashtag Metropole Debrief at Metropole TVKE at IEA Kwame and at Tandiro Ganga. What do you think? Do you agree with Kwame Wino or do you disagree? Tell us what you think. We want to take a short breather, but when we come back, we take a look at the regional landscape. We built the SGR, a very grand project by President Uhuru Kenyatta, one of his legacy projects, but now our regional uh, neighbors are catching up with us. Rwanda and Tanzania are building a bullet train. Stay with Metropole TV to find out more about this. See you shortly.